Thank you for joining Green Corporate Brands for Winter Maintenance and Your Bottom Line, How to Improve Boat, a webinar by CVC in conjunction with the City of Mississauga. My name is Deborah Kenley, and I'm the Senior Coordinator for the Green Corporate Grounds Program that helps businesses and institutions in the Credit River watershed plan for and implement sustainable landscaping projects on their property. Today's webinar will introduce you to environmentally responsible winter maintenance solutions that can help save you money and keep people safe. In the first section, we'll talk about the impacts of salt on the environment and then provide you with a number of strategic solutions for winter maintenance that will help you reduce the amounts used and needed on your property. Established in 1954, Credit Valley Conservation is one of 36 conservation authorities in Ontario with a mandate to ensure Ontario's water, land, and natural habitats are conserved, restored, and responsibly managed through watershed-based programs. Salt has a long-lasting negative effect on the watershed, but by changing our winter maintenance practices for the better, we can begin to lessen the impact and make a difference. Every winter, we introduce extremely high volumes of salt into an ecosystem that does not have the ability to cope with it. Although salt is a component of our local environment, it exists naturally at very low levels, and plants and animals are not able to adapt to a sudden influx of salt. However, new techniques for applying de-icing products like road salt and anti-icing products like brine can help reduce pollution and keep your property safe. This graph shows the annual spike in salinity during the winter in the Credit River watershed during years when we've had colder weather. By comparison, years with warmer weather show a reduction in in-stream chloride concentration, which means using less salt when it's colder can have a positive impact on our water. Recently, the blue crab, a saltwater species, was found in Mimico Creek. The nearest ocean is thousands of kilometers away, but yet salt levels in freshwater approach or exceed seawater levels each year. As a result, we are turning our freshwater into salt water. Salt is not just a winter problem. Much of the salt remains in the soil throughout the year, having a lasting negative impact. And just because you can't see it doesn't mean it isn't present. Salt ends up in our soil from melting snow piles and salt spray from cars, and then leaches into our water throughout the year. Salt hotspots in freshwater can be found in the heat of summer all across Ontario, which is why reducing the amount used in winter is critical. Salt use statistics are sobering and made worse by the conventional engineering of our urban environment that is designed to move water away from the surface and into the municipal system as quickly as possible. This illustration shows how 5 million tons of salt applied to Canadian roads each winter ends up on plants, in the soil, groundwater, and freshwater. From your cars to your clothes, the damage from salt is costly. A tree that can grow to maturity on a corporate property is an investment for a healthy city. That's why having to replace them because of stress from salt is both costly and a setback to establishing much needed tree canopy. Salt destroys cell structures and limits a tree's ability to deal with drought. Scorched leaf edges and brown needles are visible signs of salt stress. While there are some plants that have evolved to tolerate salt, like the mangrove, there are only a selection of plants native to the Credit River watershed that are resistant to it. Salt is a requisite measure in our urban environments, and though it is expected that our winters will get warmer, Climate change is a long-term process, and making short-term projections about what we can expect each winter is challenging. Though it is predicted that in future, more rain will fall than snow, larger weather patterns, like warming winters, are easier to predict than extreme events like ice storms, which is why being prepared to treat all kinds of winter conditions is important. As a landowner, winter maintenance is a legal obligation, and your best defense is having an arsenal of strategic solutions and a reliable crew at the ready to employ them. The following sections will help you decide which maintenance products and strategies are best for your property and bottom line. Liability is one of the biggest drivers of excess road salt use, but you can protect your business and be more environmentally friendly at the same time through diligent tracking and record keeping, because it's important to understand what contributes to winter maintenance safety and what doesn't. 
so that you can control the type of salt and quantities being applied to your property throughout the season. Selecting the right product for the conditions and surface requires technical knowledge. When it comes to managing ice, there are two categories of icing material used at different times and under different conditions. Anti-icing materials, including direct liquid application, are usually applied prior to the start of the winter event, but they can also be reapplied during the event. It works by preventing a bond from forming between the pavement and ice or snow, making it easier to plow. One disadvantage of anti-icing materials is requiring specialty equipment to apply it. De-icing is a reactive use of a melting agent like road salt, which is applied after a bond has been formed between ice or snow and the road surface. Road salt has a lower freezing point than water and creates a brine when applied to surfaces during a snow event. This brine prevents freezing and melts the snow. But road salt loses effectiveness at minus 10 degrees Celsius, regardless of how much you apply, which is why it is often combined with calcium or magnesium chloride, which continue to work at lower temperatures. Brine is an anti-icing and pre-wetting liquid that can be manufactured in-house. It is used to pre-treat roads to prevent frost and black ice and the bonding of snow and ice to the pavement, making it easier for plows to remove. Brine is gaining in popularity as an effective and easy to apply material that happens to be more cost effective than de-icing products. If you use road salt, it's important to know how much to apply to a surface. How many of us have torn open a bag of road salt and either used a hand or a plastic container to throw salt liberally on a walkway? Did you ever stop to think about how much salt is really required to be effective? The amount of salt in this image may seem average, but it's definitely too much. How about this? Would you believe that this is just the right amount? You only need 58 grams of salt per square meter to be effective. You may be surprised to learn that there are no eco-friendly de-icing products. Ice melts contain chloride and you can pay a premium for them. Organics like beet juice and cheese brine, which is an agricultural byproduct, are used together with salt for effectiveness, but can cause nutrient problems when entering our water. And because we haven't been using these products for long, we don't know what the full impact on the environment could be. Sand is an effective product for gravel roads in rural areas and is sometimes used in urban environments. At colder temperatures, it is mixed with salt for effectiveness. Sand does not dissolve, and the resulting sediment enters our storm sewer system over time. This means that catch basins will need to be cleaned out and residual sand on your property swept up. From this perspective, sand is not an optimal product. Many landowners, property managers, and tenants are not familiar nor up to date with winter maintenance best management practices. A good start is to provide managers or employees responsible for winter maintenance with training and then conduct refresher courses each year. Training will help facility managers with maintenance contracts and carrying out responsible day-to-day -day practices with employees. Consider Smart About Salt certification for your contractor, staff, and site. Smart About Salt is an Ontario-based organization dedicated to winter maintenance best management practices that provide contractor and facility manager training. You can also find a list of certified contractors on their website. Choosing the proper anti-icing and de-icing products for weather conditions is just one winter maintenance best management practice. There are a number of on-site solutions that can help you manage snow, prevent pollution and injury on your property and save you money. There are also a number of pre-season repairs that you can do to make your property safer in winter, like fixing potholes and cracks in the pavement so they don't accumulate ice. But we also encourage you to consider implementing the following on-site solutions to reduce your reliance on salt. Earlier on, we mentioned that conventional engineering is designed to move water quickly away from surfaces and into the storm sewer. Newer stormwater management technologies like permeable paving allow for water to infiltrate the ground and keep it from overwhelming the municipal system causing flooding. It also keeps surfaces drier in wetter conditions. 
Permeable paving is a constantly evolving technology that has distinct advantages over conventional paving for winter maintenance. And while its upfront installation costs can be higher, it offers significant year-round savings and can be less costly over time. Every property that requires snow clearing needs designated storage areas. There are many considerations when deciding where and how to stockpile snow. Choose places that don't allow meltwater to flow into natural areas or shallow aquifers and direct it towards a collection area or pond rather than a storm drain. Where possible, store snow at a low point on the property so it doesn't melt onto hard surfaces, creating a hazard as it freezes. Ensure that stockpiled snow doesn't become an obstruction for pedestrian or vehicle movement and visibility. Much of the salt contaminating the environment comes from improper storage and handling of salt. Be sure to cover salt to prevent contact from precipitation and wind. If possible, erect a permanent structure as they are far more effective than tarps. Store salt at a high point and indoors to prevent contact with water and protect liquid storage tanks from vehicle collisions. The best de-icing strategy is to close off areas on your property. You may find that there are many paths, drives, and parking areas that are not frequently used in winter. Create an access plan that closes off unused areas and erect signs explaining why. You may also want to consider heated walkways if it's within your budget to install them. Downspouts are frequently drained onto hard surfaces. And while this is less of a hazard outside of winter, wet pavement during the winter quickly becomes a direct hazard. Instead of using de-icing products on paved areas, simply prevent water from flowing onto them. Where possible, redirect downspouts into depressed areas in the landscape to create rain gardens. Ensure that eaves troughs are cleaned in the fall to minimize water and ice buildup. This will prevent overflow and icicles. Although installing living snow fences is typically an agricultural practice, they achieve the same benefits in an urban setting. The principle behind living snow fences is simple. Use trees and shrubs to prevent snow from blowing onto areas that need winter maintenance. In addition to acting as a snow fence, Trees and shrub provide valuable habitat for local wildlife. A standard snow fence can be a permanent or temporary structure. Where there is not ample space to create a living fence, a standard snow fence may be the only option. The cost of a snow fence can be offset by a reduction in winter maintenance costs over time. No business wants to shut down or have operations interrupted because of snow which is why contracts for snow and ice management on parking lots are written to ensure that safe conditions are met throughout the season through regular salting and plowing. As you've learned, there are direct costs to the environment from salt use, but your property can be damaged as well. Salt shortens the life of pavement and can corrode materials and vehicles, which is another reason why specifying how salt and related products are to be used on your property is so important. The Sustainable Technologies Evaluation Program Procurement Guidance for Parking Lot Snow and Ice Management provides guidance on writing effective winter maintenance contracts that can protect you and your property. Thank you for taking the time to learn about how you can make changes to your winter maintenance plan. We encourage you to get contractors and staff Smart About Salt certified, close off areas you don't need, don't think that one product can do it all, and of course, don't oversalt. Greening Corporate Grounds members have the power to protect the environment while making a public statement that they care about the health and well being of our community. Why not join them? For more information about the program or to review or share this webinar with others, visit cbc.ca/gcg.